Just a little warning, some of the following pictures may make you want to travel. You see, a British man has entered the record books for becoming the first person to circumnavigate the Earth on something that's been described as a, a flying motorbike. It's an autogyro, to be precise. You can see the route here from Basingstoke in Hampshire all the way across Europe, Russia, and back across the top of the world to Basingstoke again. James Ketchell made the epic journey before the first lockdown, but now has finally received the official Guinness World Record. So I went to Hampshire this week to meet him and, of course, to join him on his latest flight. First seen in a James Bond film in the 1960s, this is an autogyro and the 21st century one that took another James, Ketchell, around the world. It took him 175 successive days, flying for hours on end. And not in a plane with wings. It's not a helicopter either, because the power doesn't come from the big rotor on top, instead from the propeller and engine at the back. Like a, a flying motorbike, he says. And just like on a bike, he was exposed to the elements up at a thousand feet or more, across some of the world's most dramatic and hostile environments. Passing many famous landmarks. Sharing the wilderness with magnificent creatures. Enjoying lunch on the fly, a sandwich here over Quebec. From Basingstoke to the Bering Straits, then landing in every US state before crossing the top of the Atlantic again back home. The first person ever to do this, earning him a place now in the Guinness World Record books. It was an amazing feeling. It was all very surreal that I somehow managed to get around the world. I thought, to be honest, I'd bitten off more than I could chew to begin with. I, I really did, and at times I thought, I don't know if I can do this. And when you fly this, you're sort of, you're running on adrenaline and you can't make a mistake. Gravity will kill you. Especially risky when lightning meant he had to make an emergency landing on an empty highway in Alaska. Get through, but I don't know. Whoa, you see that? There you go. James is used to adversity. His autogyro success wasn't his first challenge, and he only learned how to fly in 2017 after previously cycling around the world and then scaling Mount Everest. And he wanted to use this journey to inspire young people across the world. So he stopped up at schools like this one in Siberia, having struggled himself when he was at school. The real mission was to inspire a million young people to pursue their own goals and dreams. When I was at school, I never really had any real drive or ambition. Uh, but then in time, you, you, you find the things that you're passionate about. And I say to young people, everyone is good at something. There we are, belts on. It does feel like sitting on the back of the bike. Just your feet there. But I won't be clinging onto uh, James's back. That's the main difference. And uh, yes, open plan, as they say. It doesn't take long to be flying high, and I did certainly feel closer to the elements, but as hair-raising as it looks, an autogyro is surprisingly stable and agile, as James was keen to prove. I felt some G-forces as we twisted and turned over the fields, trying to understand the science behind it as it took my breath away. You can't stall this aircraft. The fact that you've got very thin little rotors, they cut through the air very efficiently and they're not really subject to, to turbulence in the same way a fixed wing aircraft would be. It makes them very manoeuvrable. You can fly very, very slow and you can do things in these aircraft that you just cannot do in any other aircraft. The direction, speed and height were all controlled by a joystick and it is regarded as one of the easier and relatively cheaper forms of flying to learn. And while being stirred, I was not too shaken as we finally touched down. The versatility, the agility, absolutely incredible. And the skills of the pilot James there. No wonder he got around the world OK. This spring, James has also been awarded the Seagrave Trophy, which recognises outstanding skill, courage and initiative on land, in the air and on water. And that's next for James, sailing around the world with a crew of people from disadvantaged backgrounds. So it seems it won't be the last time we see James flying in the face of adversity. 
Wow, you can read more about James's journey. His latest book is called It's All Mental. It's a story of mental resilience and determination, all about doing things in your mind and believing you can achieve. And he spends about two years raising the finances from local businesses and sponsorship before he can even start one of those challenges. You, you interviewed him on the sofa after you'd cycled around the world, didn't you, Naga? Yeah. 2013. Yeah. And his latest one, yeah, going to Not someone you forget. No? No, not someone you can forget. And the, uh, actually, that Seagrave trophy, maybe people won't have heard of it, but it's pretty prestigious. The likes of Billy Monger, Lewis Hamilton among the recent winners, and now it's James Ketchell. I, like, uh, I think we should do a compilation somewhere, like uh, a, a kind of picture gallery of Mike Bushell faces. <laughs> it was, just the faces, it was and just, then you have to link it was just, up what sort of event. It was close yeah. to the ground, I think. It was perfectly safe because of inexperienced hands, but it was just, ooh, and the G-forces, and a bit of, ooh, the stomach left behind. <laughs> it is a bit like being on a bike. And you were, you were ooing and ahhing, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, you said was, it was like a, a wasp dramatic. or something, like an insect, wasn't yeah, it? Riding it a big insect. Uh, we'll see you later, Mike. Thanks. As